So Richard Dawkins has recently made it into the headlines about a tweet he made about some honey that was confiscated by airport security. It's been widely portrayed, especially by the um, hmm, more expressive end of the internet, as first world problems. Hello and welcome to SourceFed. My name is Elliot Morgan. My name is Joe Beretta. Perfect. World famous atheist Richard Dawkins angrily proclaimed Bin Laden has won after his jar of honey was confiscated by airport security. That is frustrating, Dr. Dawkins. Come. Let us pray. Lord, please grant Dick Dawkins. You see, Richard Dawkins, who's most famous for writing books Boring. about atheism, Boring. tweeted his angry declaration yesterday. He tweet stated, Bin Laden has won in airports of the world every day. I had a little jar of honey now thrown away by the rule-bound dundridges. Stupid waste! So is this first world problems? Well, yes and no. Look, Dawkins isn't the first guy to raise an eyebrow at the questionable nature of airport security. Back in 2006, Bill Meyer addressed this point like this. Well, actually, I can't find the video, so here's my dramatic reenactment of it. New rule. If converting to Islam is all that it takes to get the terrorists off our backs, then let me be the first to say... <laughs> so this week, two Fox News journalists were released by their kidnappers, and I was shocked. Fox News as journalists. Now, that wasn't the shocking part. The shocking part was that all these Westerners had to do to get the blades literally off their necks was to say that they were Muslims and to recite a simple two-line pledge saying that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. <laughs> now, I've gone and said it. Just call me Sheikh Phil Al Djibouti. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Saudi America. Now, I know what a lot of you will be thinking. Bill, if we convert Islam, doesn't that mean that the terrorists have won? Well, yeah, sort of, but it's a win-win. You see, they get to declare victory, and we get to take shower gel on the plane. Uh, plus, we're not really converting to Islam. We're just telling our enemies what they want to hear, trying to convince them that we're something that we're really not, or as Hillary Clinton would call it, campaigning. What, you can't take a little? I mean, look around. We don't care for the poor, or differ to the meek, or avoid judging people. It's not like we've got any commitment to Christianity. In fact, only the other day I heard a nun say, sure, I love Jesus, but I'm not married to him. Now, I know that my plan will meet with some resistance, but it really shouldn't be from the religious right, because converting to Islam will give them everything that they always wanted. Praying five times a day? Hell, where do I sign up? Or what, you mean I can stone homosexuals rather than just bitching about them on talk radio? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus! Uh, sorry, I mean Allah. Look, we're a nation enthralled to religious fanatics anyway. Yeah, you think that sucks, Dr. Dawkins? Uh, wait till you're stuck in an airport terminal for eternity. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean airport terminal, I meant hell. Does it really matter which set of religious fanatics we're enthralled to? I mean, both are filled with moral pieties and codes of conduct that no one follows. So at least let's choose the one that allows us to take hair gel on the plane. Because it really doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we will always be Americans. And so Mars goes on, but under the guise of jest, a valid point is made. I've seen, in many cases, the farcical nature of airport security many times and thought it's a good thing that you're up against second and third rate incompetence like the shoe and the underpant bomber. Otherwise, you would be screwed. I've watched them confiscate tiny pen knives because they were against the rules while simultaneously letting through metal pens that common sense would tell you would be far more effective offensive weapons. I've seen them confiscate chemicals that had flammable written on them, while simultaneously letting through other chemicals just as flammable because they didn't have flammable written on them. I'm serious, that was the scientific literacy of the security personnel in this case. And that was the criterion that they used to let one through and not the other. And you've got to see the cute irony of it, that these people who were just so dedicated to following the rules that if it's got a hazard label on, then it's hazardous, and if it doesn't, then it's okay. Their opinion took priority over someone who has worked with everything from liquid metal explosives 
in some cases, going into concentrated acids to neutron reactors. Put simply, there is a real element of frustration at seeing these, in many cases, professionally unhelpful staff systematically poke and prod you in a way that would normally be frowned on in society. And then really rub it in by rigidly enforcing these rules that are just evidently bloody stupid and do absolutely nothing to make the airlines more secure. First world problems? Well, yeah, kind of. Although one that does cost billions of US tax dollars per year. Look, it's a question of target prioritizations. If you were to proceed on the issue of confiscated honey or some other petty first world matter, then yeah, you would have a point about an academic with bizarre priorities. But that's not what happened here. It was one fucking tweet, which let's be honest, made a point, just like Bill Maher did back in 2006.